Hello everyone, Gilly here. Today I wanted to talk about what I think is a really cool and perhaps an underrated or a maybe even misunderstood construct in functional programming languages, the let expression, that's L-E-T, let. Now before I dive into actual code, because I think code is really the most interesting way to illustrate this, I wanted to bring up a quote from one of my favorite computer programming books, The Structure and Interpretation of Computer Programs, which is definitely a mind bender if you're looking for a way, a book that really helps you think differently about how you might approach programming. Um, right now, this book is free to read on MIT at MIT.edu. Highly recommend it. Check it out if you haven't. Um, but the quote I'd like to show you comes from a chapter where they're introducing let. Now, this is something interesting. Um, this book is using a dialect of lisp, which is that language with lots of parentheses that some people are afraid of. Um, but anyways, Lisp has let. Let is a pretty universal functional programming thing, even across different families of languages. Um, they all use it. They all like it. So the interesting thing is they've come and they've shown us let, and they've shown us lambda, which in F sharp is, of course, just fun. Um, anonymous functions, that is. And they've come to the conclusion, they say, no new mechanism is required in the interpreter in order to provide local variables. A let expression is simply syntactic sugar for the underlying Lambda application. So let's keep that in the back of their, our minds. Let's just hop right into code. So in order to illustrate kind of what they mean by this and how we might go about defining and understanding let better, let's just define a function. Um, let's call it do something. Um, it'll take in an A and a B. And then just to illustrate, let's make some local variables, as you might say, using let. So... Uh, let's say let plus one equals a plus one. Let's just increment a by one. And then let's just make a result variable and we'll just say that's plus one times b. And then of course we can just return result by putting it as the bottom line in the function. So this function is not very interesting. Let's uh, run it once and see kind of how it behaves. Um, let's see, let's run it against, uh, how about 42, uh, 20? 20 and 2 percent D. So if we run it this way, I can use my handy dandy code plugin, ionide, which is a fancy, awesome plugin. Um, we run it, we get back 42. So what's happening? A is 20, B is 2. We're going to add 1 to A and store it off as plus 1. And then we're going to multiply plus 1, which is just 21 for this example, by 2, which will give us 42. We're going to return 42. Pretty boring. If you're familiar with F-sharp, this should really bore you. Um, but let's try to think of it a different way. So the structure interpretation of computer programming people said that this can just be defined in terms of lambda. So let's give a shot at doing that. Let's just rename it do something too. So as we know, um, even if you look at this outermost function, do something, it's taking in variables and it's naming values, right? When we called it down here with 20, A is a name for 20 then. So we can kind of harness that and use some anonymous functions, which of course I mentioned earlier is the fun keyword. So if we say plus one, um, we can name our first value, A plus one. And then the body or the things that come after, if you look at it from this guy's perspective, just go as the body of the function. So let's do the same thing for result. So we take in result and then we're just returning result. And of course, result is plus one times B. So let's just run this really quick to make sure we're not crazy. So I send the file, I get 42 and I get 42. So here we're just doing the exact same thing as up here. And this is showing what the authors mean when they say that Lambda expressions are really just kind of a, a more general thing or, or um, something that can be used to implement let expressions. Um, so this might look a little ugly at first. Let's kind of make it resemble the form above a little bit better by just kind of indenting it like that. Um, so this would be kind of my first shot at building my own let. Sort of just taking a function and defining it in line and then immediately calling it. But if we're being honest with ourselves, this looks kind of ugly. Um, as programmers, when we see this kind of this, then that, then this, then that 
programming style, we like to be able to read it top to bottom. But this forces us into this weird state where we're starting here and we're saying, okay, I see plus one. What is plus one? Got to hop down here to understand what plus one is. All right, move on to the next line. I see result. Well, I've got to hop down into here, I think, to see what result is. And then I see result uses plus one. And I'm getting kind of confused. And then it returns result in the bottom. So this feels a little unnatural. Let's introduce a helper function, which will allow us to take these things that feel unnatural because they're in the bottom and just throw them to the top. So to do that, let's just make a new thing, which is also called let. Now this is something really cool. Um, I'll show you what that means in a second if you're not familiar with that. Um, but basically let's just gonna take in some value and then it's gonna take in some body afterwards and it's just gonna apply the body to the value. So it's like, Give me a callback and give me a value and I'll invoke your callback with my value and return the result. Um, in F Sharp, you can use backticks to make identifiers and actually this can have, you know, even spaces in it, my version of let. And if you use backticks, you can actually embed keywords into it and it won't be a problem. The backticks basically say this is a special thing, kind of like uh, in JavaScript, people will throw like a dollar sign in front of things sometimes or an underscore or what have you. But anyways, if we do this, we can now rewrite, whoops, we can now rewrite our function to, um, to use this new helper. And this will end up looking a lot nicer. So to do this, um, we're still gonna have a lot of the same things. They just kind of get shuffled around a little bit. So we use let, we give it a value, and then we give it a body, which is the function. Um, so we do the same thing here. And you notice really all this is doing is taking our prior version and shuffling things around. Whoops! <laughs> uh, let me reopen that, sorry about that. Um, let me go back into Zen mode. So it's really the same thing. We've kind of just shuffled our values around and now it's a little more friendly and to be honest, a little more familiar. In fact, if you hide this for a second, you notice it looks a lot like our version up here. We have plus one, which is being defined first. And then we have result, which is being defined. We're just returning result. So that's nice. Let's run it just to make sure I'm not totally lying. Um, 43 all the way down. Cool. Um, so that's that. That's kind of nice. It's really nice. It's very close to this let up here, except our name comes on the right side and we have a little bit of boilerplate around everything. So to make it look even a little more f sharpy, if you will, we can use this fancy back pipe operator and we can rewrite it like this. And now it looks even closer, in my opinion, to the version up here. Um, however, like I said, there's some boilerplate around this, like the word fun and this backpipe and all that. Now, looking back at our let helper here, you might notice that this looks like something you, you maybe or maybe have not seen before. So let's flesh that out a little bit. Um, you may notice the type here. Basically, I'll take in an A, which is my value, then I'll take in a function, which maps from an A to a B, and I'll give you back a B, just by applying the value. Now you may notice that this is the same thing as the built-in, what people call the pipe operator. It's really just function application. Um, we've just named it let with a bunch of backticks around it. So with that in mind, let's rewrite this one more time. And to do that, let's just get rid of our helper and let's change the direction of the pipe. And there you have it. There's an even more interesting way to write let in my opinion. And of course, since this uh, operator binds tightly, we can get rid of some of the parentheses around this. And there we go. We have an even more, uh, I guess the word is concise, way to write let. And this is really just another form of let. So hopefully this uh, showed you some of the kind of interesting ways you can think about let and helped to kind of clarify what the structure and interpretation of computer programming people meant by exactly what let does. So one thing I'll do at the, at, finally is um, I'll talk about what they meant by syntactic sugar. Uh, basically the idea of syntactic sugar is that in your language you may have something different or something new, but it's not really different or new. It's just a different way of writing the same thing. So you can really think of something like let a equals 42 and then you know just return a. 
you can really think of this as being syntactic sugar for something like this. And these things are really equivalent. And hopefully that helped you, helped you understand kind of what let means and how in functional programming especially, there aren't really a lot of concepts. There just tend to be different ways to say the same things.